All right, here we go. Systems of inequalities. Now, before you start watching this video, I'm going to tell you that I'm purposely teaching you this the wrong way. Because... Well, let's just say once we get to crazy word problems where we have to graph six or maybe seven inequalities, uh, this way will make it a lot easier to work with. Okay? So let's start. First of all, it says leave the answer unshaded. When you normally graph systems of, or when you normally graph an inequality, you shade where it's true. Well, for this purpose, we are going to shade false. And after you see a couple examples, you'll understand why, okay? So, quick recap. How do you um, graph a s inequality? If you are in y equals mx plus b, so this would be y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2, you can simply graph the inequality like you would. So, this is a positive 2. We're going to go down to over 3. This is greater than or equal to. I'm sorry, greater than or equal to, so we are going to have a solid line. And for the shading part, since this says y is greater than or equal to, when you are in y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, you can just shade above because y is greater above the line. Okay? So, but... For the purpose of these notes, like I said, we are going to shade false. We are going to shade in the opposite direction. So that's the confusing part. And like I said, once you see an example done where we have three or four, it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay? Now, if you are going to graph the second one in standard form, remember you must use a test point. So this is going to say 2x minus y is less than 7. So you have y is negative 7. And your x-intercept is 3.5. And this is going to be a dashed line. And since, now let's think. We're going to have to place a test point here because when you're in standard form, that rule doesn't always apply. So this is less, you would assume below. Remember, I always say test 0, 0 if possible. So 0 minus 0 is less than 7. That is true. So we would be shading in this direction. Even though this looks, it says less. You would assume you're shading below. But this is true. So if we were doing this correctly, you would shade towards your test point. This is where you would shade. But that's not the case here. Remember what I just got done saying. For the purpose of these notes, we are going to shade false, which means this test point is true. I'm going to shade away from my test point for the purpose of these notes, okay? So the why we do it that way is because it will leave our area of which both inequalities is true blank and it'll be much easier to work with when you have multiple okay so again the proper way to do this would have been to have this final area shaded all nice and that would be our overlap but by shading false you leave the final answer blank, so you don't have to worry about your pencil marks and stuff all over the place because those intersection points are going to be very important. So here's four. Let's see if it makes a little bit more sense when we work with four. All right, so we have to first graph all of our inequalities, and then hopefully you'll see why shading false is good. First one, x is greater than 2. So we have a vertical line, dashed, and it's greater than, which means since we're shading false, we are going to shade this one to the left. And then the next one we're going to do is y is less than or equal to 3. So we're going to go graph a solid line at y equals 3. 
it says it's less than, so we are going to shade in the opposite direction, and we are going to shade above. And then the next one we have is x plus 4, or x plus y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So that's going to be x is negative 4, y is negative 4, greater than or equal to, so that means we are going to draw a solid line, and that means we are going to have to shade, for this one, I'm just doing a test point in my head, I'm going to test 0, 0, and I'm going to find out that that would technically be true, and that means I am going to shade below. And then the last thing we have to graph is x plus y is less than negative 1. So we have to go graph one more line. So that's going to give us x is negative 1, y is negative 1, and this is going to be a dashed line. And again, I'll test 0, 0. Uh, is 0 less than negative 1? No, it is not. So for the last one, we are going to be shading um, false. So we will be shading up above. And that leaves our unshaded region as our final answer. Now, if we were graphing those all true, by the time you got done with the third one, you'd barely be able to see this part being shaded anymore. And the other important thing that once we get to linear programming, all of our intersection points are going to be very crucial to answering a linear programming problem. So that'll also make it easier for us to find where our final answer intersection points are. Okay, so that is a quick little lesson on systems of inequalities. Remember, the real way to do it would be to shade true for both, and wherever you shade is, your shading is overlapped, that's your final answer. But as you can see in example number two, when you sh are shading with four lines, it gets a little crazy, so by shading false for all of them, we leave our final answer easy to work with in blank. Okay? This is Longo. I'm out of here. See you. Bye.